did not have the, fa and the favorable matchup in the previous match. Uh, they were tri laning, which is uh, not very common these days. Usually you have either two on mid or two on an off lane and just two safe laners. So I think they should just uh, try to win DK Phobos' lane, put him, put him in a uh, position where he can actually carry the game from the off lane. I was surprised that they didn't go for a Brewmaster for him in that previous game, because we saw on day one, Phobos' Brewmaster was just going off, like regardless of the counter picks against him. But this time, OG have reference points they know what the strengths are. And so far, while we've given praise to Viver and Phobos, Ilden and LTW have been kind of staying under the radar for the most part. And it's possible that OG may start to exploit that lack of star power from the cores. It's always consistency from the cores, but when we move later on into the bracket of these tournaments, it takes more than just consistency. Anything to add that B-Cup? Yeah, I mean, ILTW early in that last game, I mean, casting it before, like, we saw that early, even without the Kai on the Storm Spirit, he was just trying to make aggressive plays and open up those lanes for DK Phobos, who didn't really perform well early on. So I feel like even when DK Phobos doesn't perform, Team Spirit, they find a way to open it up for those cores or those heroes that aren't getting that farm that they need. Looking at the draft so far, we have four bands on the screen. We have Tusk, Elder Titan, Sanking, and Tiny taken out of the pool. So a lot of initiators, a lot of early game harassers taken out. If you, a spirit, do you possibly target OG's stand-ins? Because consider this, you normally have a roster of five players, but on the side of OG, they're playing with two stand-ins, two teammates that they probably don't play with every single day, maybe they don't have the synergy 100% down. Would you target the stand-ins or the main roster? I think both stand-ins are really versatile, maybe uh, Kezu not as much as uh, Mad. So I think they should get rid of the Enigma. He's been playing Enigma a lot uh, recently. Uh, or, um, you can't shut down Jarex, that's the problem. He, he can carry out the game from position four with pretty much any hero. We saw in the previous game as well with Elder Titan, some crucial stomps. Yeah, I'm, I keep waiting to see an Earth Spirit ban because Team Spirit get first pick. And I, I mean, Viver has a history of playing on the, on the hero. and. That last game alone inspires confidence in it. If you're going to target OG's cores, you don't do it in the drafting phase. You do it in the actual game. And heroes like Earth Spirit do a great job at that. And looks like OG are respecting Phobos' Brewmaster and they ban it out. All right, quick mention as well. Chen is not banned. Yes. I hope Team Spirit goes for it. Also, they didn't ban the CK, which, I mean, that's been a first ban against Team Spirit every single time. I've seen him rip apart teams, especially recently. I saw him play a game where he outfarmed an anti-mage. Anti-mage didn't have a battle fury yet, and CK, Ilden, he had himself a heart and an arm would already finished off. It was crazy, and it's, I'm surprised it's not banned yet. Jarex Elder Titan gonna be secured by OG. The crowd is screaming for this as well. Everyone loves a good Jarex Earth Spirit game. You know who's a good illusion team? OG. Really? Yeah. I never knew that. Well, they, they did you not mean... decide to go for a CK, Ooh. but uh, there they really did. All right, there we go. So Earth Spirit and CK are going to be making the uh, making an appearance on the main stage during the first phase. Now we haven't seen a lot of CK on the main stage, but there is a good reason behind this. Explain to us why is CK such a strong hero right now? The panel is dead. I'm no It was his call. He was so happy about it. I want to hear the where this confidence is coming from. Clearly, you had something behind it. I mean, it's just previous performance. You see Odin, he's always able to make his lanes work out. He's always being aggressive. It's the style that Team Spirit played, and that's the kind of hero that can be aggressive. You get a nice Chaos Bolt out there, Reality Rift with the minus armor early. Like, you can just make things happen with that Odin CK, and, and Team Spirit's the kind of team that can always give Odin that kind of farm to make something happen. All right, so let me ask you something. Battle sure. Fury? Battle Fury CK. Uh, <laughs> maybe if, if a Phantom Lancer stays in the pool, I think OG is going to go for it because it's a really good hero against the CK, doesn't care about reality rift. and uh, So we still might see it. I've seen a couple of times uh, in public that people do it. Uh, not, not the best build, but uh, you can make it work, actually. Uh, Tinker banned out by OG, which means um, that uh, they don't want to play against him. Earth Spirit, Shadow Shaman do not provide that much of a vision. Uh, Some heroes that are not banned out currently is the Razor, I believe the PL is not banned, and, and also the Omni Knight. Now, Omni Knight with the CK, would this actually be a consideration here for Team Spirit? If you do that, then 
you're kind of showing Phobos' hand a little too early. And seeing as though OG has been specifically targeting Phobos with the Brewmaster, like obviously there are still options available for Phobos. But I think Spirit, after showing your first core this early on, you're better off saving Phobos until later on. And if an Omni Knight still proves to be useful, I could definitely see it coming out. But with Earth Spirit Silence, with Shadow Shaman Initiation, it's going to be risky. But let's not forget Terrorblade is also in the pool. Yeah, someone just told me that uh, OG's a great illusion team. Yeah, that, that, that's a good ban. Uh, Enigma with uh, Midnight Pulse against CK illusions deals tons of damage. That's why I mentioned that they should target uh, Kez's uh, hero pool. I think Phantom Lancer is a must for OG. Here already said why. Okay, OG are going to be looking for their third hero. They've got both of their support so far. What, what kind of a core, any comfort heroes that OG should be picking up right now? You need heroes that deal specifically with CK. Heroes that either out 1v1 him, which there's a very small list of heroes that do that, or heroes that generate a lot of chaos, like Phantom Lancer, which Lacoste referred to. Going for the control first, that puck. So the Dream Coil and the Silence will be very useful, and I believe they're going to need the early gank ability. The, the, the early nukes from puck, I mean, nukes from puck at the early stages of the game, uh, you can control CK illusions, so, but I think they're gonna need more. Puck can be mid, can be off lane. Uh, I'm not sure that Kezu plays something like uh, Legion Commander. That, that seems like a good pickup here. I'm not sure if he plays it though. Yeah, against the CK specifically, overwhelming odds would be incredibly valuable because right now you don't really have the best illusion clear. Like, obviously, Puck has pretty good magic damage, but CK illusions are so tanky that you'll have to spend like four illusory orbs to take them down. And Nyx Assassin also starts causing problems for Puck. That's a classic counter pick. Oh, Terrorblade gonna be picked up here by OG. And wow, quick pick for Team Spirit. That's gonna be the Brood Mother. Oh boy, we've seen this hero back during the tournament, but we finally see it beak off. I see a big smile on your face. What's it, what's going on through your head right now? Just DK Phobos Broodmother. I, I've seen it before and it, it makes me smile. I get really excited for DK Phobos Broodmother. How is OG going to be able to deal with this Broodmother? What are their solutions right now? There are not enough uh, heroes to deal with the Broodmother right now. Maybe they want to sneak in a Tidehunter and put it uh, in a lane against Broodmother. That can work. Uh, Legion Commander is not the best hero against it anymore because of the magical damage resistance from the spiderlings. Yeah, but at the same time, picking a Broodmother ninth pick is always extremely risky. I mean, even, well, not a ninth pick, but like second to last pick, whenever the enemy team still has options available. I definitely see that's going to be a lot of movement in the laning phase. Uh, Phobos is going to have to get cozy somewhere against a Terrorblade in, like, what? Well, would probably end up being the situation. Terrorblade's okay. Poor Man's Shield has been eliminated, unfortunately, which that was usually... Unfortunately? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Apologize now I'm, to the whole Dota community. I deeply regret that statement. Thank God Poor Man's Shield was taken out. That piece of garbage item letting you take all of Broodmother's damage, all the Eidolon damage, doesn't matter because you all have damage blocks now. Irrelevant now. Thing is that Broodmother still does a lot of magic damage and Terrorblade is super squish. So if Broodmother's just more interested in nuking the Terrorblade as opposed to farming up a bunch of Spiralings, then that makes sense because Shadow Shaman, if he levels Ether Shock early, he can burn through some Spiralings. You did mention the increased magic resistance does negate yep. some of that, but... Okay, maybe DK is a, is a good hero for OG. He, DK is one of the heroes that can stand in the lane against the Brood Mother. Mm -hmm. This last pick for Team Spirit. Now, are there any heroes that are sticking out they, for you? Or Peacock? if they want to run uh, Timbersaw as well. One of the heroes that can do, not necessarily too well, but uh, also good against CK in the later stages of the game, and they don't have any burst. I like Timber a lot, actually. Any input here for Vcop? Any heroes that you also feel could be a really good fit for either, either of these lineups? No, I mean, I agree. I like Timber here. You're waiting for this last man here for it's more of a It's more of a no-tail special, though, you think? Resolution channel that while Mad will... Well, actually, I don't really know if I expect Matt on the Terrorblade. Being more of a resolution because I saw e Arteezy in the previous game, he was like, oh, oh, you want to go Battle Fury on Terrorblade? That's my house. I don't think it's going to become a new thing on Terrorblade, you but it's that. actually doable. 
I mean, you got a bunch of spiderlings to go through. You got to yeah, clean through first illusions. First, you need to farm that battle fury. It's not to in detail. your inventory at the you start. You make it sound as if like everyone starts with a battle fury. What, what are you talking about? The way resolution farms, it almost feels that way. <laughs> Quelling Blade is not Battle Fury. Calm down, Tsunami. I don't know. It's not that, the same thing. That Monkey King in the previous game, after getting just destroyed in the lane, Resolution was like, ah, big deal. And plus, he, he's got to show up Illidan now, right? Saw that post-game interview? There's a lot on the line here. There is, well, technically, the tournament lives are on the line, Tsunami. <laughs> it's, you know? not it's, not, it's not laughing matter. It's, it's about honor. It's about, <laughs> it's about pride in the CIS region. Who is the number one one position? Okay, last bang gonna be a spend for Team Spirit. They're worried about that cleave, and they go again for the DK for both Venom man. Actually, is this a mid Venom? Is it mid Brood offlane Venom? Which one? Which one is it? I'm expecting they're gonna wait for it to see what uh, they last pick, and then they're gonna adjust the lanes. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of vision uh, for Team Spirit this game. Venom Wards, uh, Brood Mother, Nyx Assassin. OG, they need to look for their offlane here. Are they looking? Do they need more initiation? Or think, are they looking for some oomph here? I think they need more counter initiation. I think that already mentioned the Tide Hunter would be a great pickup here. I swear, Lacoste, you love watermelons. Keep talking watermelons. about watermelons. Tide Hunters and watermelons. Why? You clearly do not eat your fruit. What do you eat in Croatia? <laughs> and it is going to be the Timbersaw here for OG, so. Got some good predictions going on, but panel-wise, I want to hear your thoughts. Whose draft do you prefer? Whose draft? With the last pick, Timber, so uh, I'll go for uh, OG, even though every time I bet against Broodmother, it seems like uh, I lose the bet. <laughs> yeah, but every time I bet on Broodmother, I lose the bet, so one of us are going to be wrong then, because <laughs> I think I'm going to go with OG as well, because... Second to last pick, Broodmother always stresses me out, and Venomancer is not necessarily as strong enough for enough core that's not a concern yeah, like we saw in the previous game. The thing about the Broodmother is uh, you hit that uh, timing. Uh, I wonder what the build is going to be this game. Pro might be even Orc game good against uh, Puck and... Uh, Battle Fury. Oh, Battle Fury. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you hit that peak and uh, once all tier 2 towers are down, uh, you feel like you're stuck. You can just continue farming, but if you feed away two kills, you it allows other team to get back into the game. Tsunami, I think we need to stop with the battle for CKs. I don't. I actually... need to stop. Everyone else I... needs to stop. All those people up there need to stop. <laughs> oh, all those people up there. Okay. Yeah. I don't think CK would even be able to hit Creeps as how high he, uh, how high he is on that horse. Be cop prediction. Uh, I'm trusting Illidan on the CK, so I'm gonna be the one guy here to go for Team Spirit. So two Spirit, one OG. Well, one one Spirit, two OG. Apparently, I can't math. We're gonna throw it over to the casters right now. Take it away for this best of one series. It's gonna be a close one. Thank you so much, Danny. Base Kip, we're here. It is the yes. lower bracket. Another elimination match. It's happening all today. How are you feeling about this OG versus Team Spirit? I think this is going to be a close one. And I think uh, I actually really like Team Spirit's lineup. It, it really fits their play style. Yeah. They're really aggressive. They love the run at you. They've got the Brood Mother. I think this is an amazing Nyx Assassin game as well in terms of dealing with the Timber, dealing with the Puck. I'm actually really looking forward to watching Team Spirit play. And I, I think they might have this one. I, I also back the DK Phobos Broodmother. I think if he picks up an orchid, uh, orchid this game, he can pretty much solo kill anybody on the OG side. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one of the scariest things to see in a best of one elimination match is a Broodmother coming up at any stage because it's just yeah. one of those heroes that so completely changes the way you have to play Dota. Yeah, and Team Spirit, this Venomancer, the, the damage this game is, is going to be helpful, but I think the more annoying thing is going to be the constant scouting, uh, the Blink Dagger cancelling on the puck. It just makes life uh, kind of difficult for OG. And even just the defensive plays with the, the Plague Wards is going to make it difficult for them to turn up to a tower and put the Master Serpent Wards down or uh, you know establish themselves with the Terra Blade, with the Metamorphosis to really chunk down those Tier 1s. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a really big fan of Team Spirit's lineup. All right, well, we're moving in now. Resolution going to be able to secure himself a rune. It looks like they're trying to dodge away from that Broodmother lane as K. Phobos is going to be inhabiting the top lane against the Puck. How does that matchup work out? Is that, is that just terrible for Keizu? Uh, the Puck, at the very least, shouldn't die, uh, but it depends totally on like what the Broodmother player wants to do, whether or not Brood wants to put on pressure. At, at the very least, Puck has phase shift to be able to deal with the non-stop spam uh, of the spawn spiderlings. So in terms of heroes that deal with Brood reasonably well, I think Puck actually, uh, actually matches up all right. Well, nice little trick there in the mid lane. They let the creeps go all the way through, so one of them gets taken out early on, and Wave should push over onto the Team Spirit side. Yeah. 
but at the same time, the, the timber matches up even better, and they're just gonna swap the lanes immediately, so... There you go. Yeah, dream matchup right there. Of course, you have to be careful about uh, lane swaps as it goes further on. Metamorphosis used there in the mid. There's gonna be an impale down bottom. Doesn't quite connect onto Keizu, and it looks like already early on with all these creeps there, Resolution's gonna be putting the heart here on the CK. Actually, don't see Terrorblade versus Chaos Knight in the mid matchup. No, it, it's definitely unusual. And they've even got Fly in here just with the nonstop harassment, uh, even helping out a little bit with the denying. So, yeah, definitely getting Resolution off to a good start. And he's been, I think that's been the focus for OG for the most part this tournament, other than that previous game that they just played against TNC, uh, where they did kind of make Keizu the big playmaker, and he was the one that was going to win them the game eventually on the Enigma. But Team Spirit did get rid of that option this game. And so it looks like most of it's going to be falling to Resolution TB. And, and that's something to sort of think about, too, is like they don't have that big controlling force in the same way that they have a black hole. But yeah. to you, is it only Resolution pretty much the main hero we need to be watching how well he does in this game? Or is there any other pivotal hero for either team? I mean, the, the Timber Saw, of course, as well, with being the last pick for OG, they're putting a lot of stock in it. This is a game where the Timber can do quite well, bursting down the CK illusions, uh, holding off the lane against the Broodmother is also going to be a really important aspect. So the, the Timbersaw, I think, is going to do well. Whether or not Mad can go completely out of control, I'm I'm not sure. And even if the Timbersaw has an amazing game, it's always going to fall to the Terrorblade to be the building damage, right? There's He's the only one who's really doing physical damage on the team. And so if Resolution falls a little bit behind, that's where the big problem for OG could actually become uh, taking the buildings and, you know, they don't have to end the game early, but they definitely need Resolution to be having a good game. And I think that's the reason that he's mid right now, as opposed to in one of the side lanes. Good. Works for me. Two minute runes gonna be popping up now. There is a regen down bottom, which might be battling it out as mid lane. A lot of damage coming out of Resolution. Need to run away, but with the Maledic there, he might just end up going down. Does have a Sal, but not enough to keep him alive. First blood by FNG. I think this is exactly why Team Spirit loved the Witch Doctor. It has a lot of kill potential, does a bunch of damage in the early stages of the game, uh, and is just in general such a strong laning hero. You know, there are not that many position fives in the game that can actually come and you know, make that rotation, though the CK of course does help out a lot, bringing a lot of damage with the Reality Rift and the Chaos Bolt early on. The other thing we should talk about down here bottom, this Nyx Assassin has been doing a great job of zoning out this puck. You look at the CS and only 2-0, and only level 2 as well for himself. It's been a rough game so far for that puck. Yeah, they've, they've kind of, they've definitely deprioritized Keizu this game. He's going to try and get what he can out of the lane, but even once he gets farmed, the Nyx Assassin is just insanely annoying to play against. And it's, he's probably not going to be farmed enough to like pick up a Blink Yules in a reasonable time. So this Orchid that the Broodmother already has queued up uh, is going to be really difficult for him to deal with. Yeah, probably for Matt as well, as obviously yeah. Timber saw hates being silenced. But yeah. we'll see if they itemize to deal with that. Yeah, he'll, he'll be a little bit tankier. He might get a Lotus or a Yules this game to help deal with it. But that's only going to come a little bit later on. Oh, and Pale is there. Kezu is just going to take these right clicks. And this is what I'm talking about. You get that extra little bit of movement speed. You run this guy down. Kezu's not having a good time in this lane at all. It's mid lane. They find resolution. Good shackles. Able to turn this. Now the rolling as well. They kick Elodin back. Going to find that one. As it looks like he is maybe going to drop. Oh, the stop. Pale misses. They're able to turn it. Derek is trouble now as well. He ends up falling and turns. Team Spirit making it happen. Uh, Fiverr is having a ridiculous day so far. The Earth Spirit game just before, now on this Nyx Assassin, he's putting in so much work. There, there were some uphill misses involved there, as you mentioned, but what a turnaround, and Illidan with the salve, able to go straight back to farming on the mid lane. That was a really big commitment for OG, and it just blew up in their face. Oh, and again, these best of ones, any momentum that you can build is just so pivotal going into the later stages. That four minutes in, it's only a thousand gold lead, and uh, it looks like Mad still having a good time against this Broodmother top at the very least. Yeah, and Spirit, they're so good at playing this aggressive kind of run at you style. All three of their cores are finding okay farm in the early stages. The Timbersaw is way out in front in terms of CS, but I mean, the, even the Venomance is actually nipping at his, his heels. Oh, Jerex, they're going to be able to stun, and that should be a dead Earth Spirit in the jungle. Enemy has vision is the call, and in fact, there is a ward that's about to expire right there. Yeah, Jarex is, he's really good with the, the calls on the wards, but unfortunately this one's a little bit 
a little bit late and was just because he got picked off. Fly, does he finally have some boots? I was about to point out that the poor Shadow Shaman, uh, five minutes in, didn't have any boots, but he does finally have them picked up now, so... Maybe a little bit more rotation potential, but we're yet to see these OG ganks stick at all. Yeah, and you were talking about the effectiveness of that Nyx Assassin. That's been mainly just a, a heavy rotational hero, only yep. level two right now, and he's still getting this much done, and they're forcing resolution to the jungle. The really nice thing that they have for the Nyx Assassin in this game as well is that they have two different heroes that can go and take the jungle and give the Nyx Assassin a lane. So that either the Venomancer or the Broodmother can do that, and that's going to get the Nyx Assassin caught right back up. Uh, and he'll, they'll be able to pay him back for all the work that he's been doing in the early game. Even if he does fall behind, it's not a huge deal. Oh, Kezu is up here, down bottom, and see if they end up being able to bait something out. There is also Jerex nearby, so if they did try and make some type of a heavy dive for Kezu, he would probably be punished. In fact, Nyx Assassin going to spot him out, battling for the rune. They get the kick away. Jerex realizes he doesn't want to be here anymore and will retreat. But he's just playing, kind of playing separately for the rest of his team at the moment. At least the support duo is playing separately for OG. Not really trying to make any rotations happen. They're just letting the, the 1v1 lanes continue to play out. And that continues to play out in Team Spirit's favor. Uh, we do have a little bit of building damage being traded, but DK Phobos is actually cutting the wave up top, not wanting to lane against the Timber directly. Four heroes moving in right now. They're wrapping all the way around. Silence onto one, rolling off the mark. They have a spike here, off to the other side, and ILTW in some trouble. He's going to drop the ward to block him off, and now he gets off a gill as well. He's actually walking away from all these heroes. Is he really just going to be able to south his way out of there? The chase is continuing. They're rolling forward. ILTW dealing a good bit of damage. Another ward block there, but I think that finally maybe it's... There's no stuns, there's no bogus back, back. there's nothing left! Oh, That was insane. <laughs> <laughs> what a juke! I mean, come on, the, the tango is way in, get the three-man Gale, keep planting the Plague Wards behind you the whole time. I thought he was 100% dead. I clicked on him, saw no TP scroll in his inventory. He had to bring it out of the backpack, and he still managed to make that play. Oh, that was so nice. And that's another one of those things where you're building this momentum. 3,000 gold lead at seven minutes into this game. And OG, what's the response here? Uh, maybe a roll in onto Illidan as they do find him mid, but Witch Doctor is here as well. And with that little hold, hand holding, he's going to be safe to walk away. I, I mean, Illidan didn't didn't have to be worried at all. There's no damage between these three heroes on the OG side. There's a two, what, two level fours and a level two. This is a, a very rare miss on the Jerax Earth Spirit. I don't even know if it's necessarily his fault. The Spirit supports have just been there uh, to turn around any attempts that he's gone for. And they don't necessarily have the strongest cores to gank for either. You know, the Timbersaw needs a bunch of levels to bring up his burst. The Puck was not doing well. And Terrorblade you know, has damage, but they need to bring more CC and uh, beyond just the Earth Spirit. Yeah. Well, and meanwhile, Shackles are holding Viber in place. He's going to get punched a couple of times, but with FNG moving in, they might decide to turn now on to fly. Impale is ready to fly as well as they don't quite hit it there, but the reality is they've got enough damage here to kill off that Shadow Shaman. And the snowball continues for Team Spirit. Uh, it, it's only four kills, but it's a 4K net worth lead eight minutes in. They've just been farming so well across the board, and the only bright spot at the moment for OG is the, the Timbersaw, who isn't really ready to move. I mean, he's still just sitting up here trading farm with DK Phobos. I guess we have to wait and see when Matt is finally getting get involved. But as soon as he leaves this lane, his tier one is dead. So that's what he's, that's the kind of what he's holding back at the moment. Well, and he really is the only one having a good time. Kezu going to be pulled in here. We'll be able to walk away after the fact. But you take a look at the level disparity. Terrible level five, Puck level five. The Venomancer and CK are eight and seven. They have such a huge net worth and experience advantage. The catch here, though, on Viber could be good as they're trying to kick him back under. But maybe the turnaround, Kazu, who was at the silence, still living for the moment. They're doing a good bit of damage with the rotation in for Matt. They're going to be able to find that kill. Maybe taking down another. If they could burn down Illidan, he's just going to TP away way again though no way to interrupt it and spirit get out not enough stuns no dream call yet fng also with the tp out gets the well played chat wheel going as well oh and that's the mad rotation not really changing very much and like i said immediately dk fobo is just going to take this tier one tower oh that hurts so badly you only find one kill in the midst of all that lose your 
tier one tower like you said, and uh, now bottom lane resolution is being chased as well. They've got the Gale on him. Poison Nova is there, and well, Sunder's pretty nice. They are getting maybe a little bit concerned, so they will back out and try and get out of it. And that's the other thing that's scary. ILCW maybe gonna end up going down here as well. Spike Carapace trying to turn this around onto Mad, and underneath the cover of the tower, they won't be able to dive that. Yeah, that was a really nice spike to Carapace, just to buy a little bit more space. DK Phobos going to get his Orchid delivered in a couple of seconds, and uh, at that point, I don't know who's going to be able to come and contest this top lane. I mean, the, the Timber is unlikely to die solo to the Brute Mother, but every other hero is just complete food. And, and they're diving to Tier 3, oh they've got Jarex right back. Stuck back there, Tier 3 tower, he is going to be able to walk away from that, but with that smoke gank, I mean, they're all here, mad. He's going to try and chase this down. The Orchid on the puck. Silence, though. The Orchid is there. He's going to end up falling. They take down the puck, and Mad can't do anything. He might just get turned around upon, lowering that armor, trying to find a kill. Mad does burn through the illusions, but there's the Impale onto two as well. They're trying to run away from this one. Another spike Carabas, but I think they will eventually find themselves a return kill in that mix. Yeah, looks like Phobos just not interested in coming over to get involved with that fight. He did have a couple of web charges uh, and some web laid down over here, but just deciding to cut his losses and uh, did get a lot more damage on the tier two. That, that tier two is probably not long for life. The Venomancer is doing the exact same thing on the other side of the map. Team Spirit applying so much pressure with their Tricor. And this is the scary part, too. It's just that stranglehold that feels like it's getting tighter and tighter on OG's map presence. They're pushed back in, and every time one or two of them comes to a lane, the other side's pushing in. They just need to get up some type of level experience or something as... Oh. Mad. There's the Orchid. They got eyes on them. Slowed up for the moment. The Cask is going to connect. They have the Maledict as well. The Impale comes through. He's taking a lot of damage from this. Also getting a lot of regen, though. So he will be able to live. And the Timber saw, again, a silver lining. Yeah, he still had his hood available as well, but the problem is is that Timbersaw to really do his damage needs the lockdown heroes on his team to actually be able to come and move into the fights, and that's really not happening at the moment. No Blink Dagger on the puck, the two supports are still quite low level and quite squishy, and without that, it feels like Mad is either just going to get TP'd away from or you know they're just going to run away from him back to the, the safety of their team. This time around, they're going to bring four heroes to bear. They really want this kill on Mad. Oh, this is great if Mad can get away from this one, and it looks like he will be able to. A lot of attention given to that lane, and now yeah. OG able to drop Ward's bottom and attempt to take the Tier 1 tower. Yeah, it looks like they might actually be able to get it. Uh, Spirit, not very many TPs available, still just chasing Mad around in circles. They will find the trade, uh, as they will probably grab this Tier 2 in the end, and then maybe swing over towards mid to get some more damage down there. Illidan's actually just running for more kills. Gets oh on the Jarax. And just like that, it happens. Only takes a second. Yeah, the way that he's moving is, on the CK is so nice. He knows that his other two cores can take the buildings just fine, so he's free to just run around finding kills. Gale is out. They got the stun. They got the Orchid. They got the Impale. They got everything. Matt trying to stay alive through this. The Maledict is going to do a good amount. He's going to decide to TP back home, which should keep him alive. And meanwhile, they pull back in yet another phase shift. No avail there at all as Fly is getting ran down. The Captain, nowhere left to run either. A double kill for Illidan. It's 13 minutes, and they're taking the Tier 3 tower damn near. Uh, and again, it has to be the Timbersaw to defend, but the Plague Wards are getting dropped down. There's plenty of Spiderlings. I think Spirit will end up backing out. They're a little bit low on a couple of their heroes, and no Voodoo Restoration just yet to sustain. Although Mad gets turned around upon a three-second stun here as well. They're doing a good amount of damage. They interrupt it now. Still starting to fall. He does find one kill in turn. Can Mad get away from this? It's so much damage, and they will eventually take him down. But he killed off the CK at least. Yeah, but the Terrorblade, meanwhile, does take out a Tier 2 tower at bottom resolution, using the space very effectively, and I guess this is just what OG have to do. They have to leverage the Timbersaw as much as they possibly can, just to make space to bring the other cores back into the game. His yeah. resolution is still behind. I mean, that's the thing, though. Like, he's got Treads right now and Aquila on yep. this Terra Blade. No Battle Fury in sight. <laughs> no Battle Fury in sight, absolutely. Yeah, needing a little bit more of an active build. Um, well, we're 14 minutes in. It's 7,000 net worth lead. How are you feeling like the game is right now for OG? Is it insurmountable? Do you feel like there's still things that they can cling on to? Uh, I think... 
for now, they're still they're still in a position where they can win. They still have tier twos up on both mid and bottom. The timber saw spam is starting to ramp up in terms of keeping team spirit outside of the base. Um, and they do have they have opened up the bottom side of the map a lot for TB to be able to farm down there and continue applying pressure. So I, I think they can actually still oh, bring man. this back. Oh, four seconds done on no, mid. Oh no, that was one too many chains. And just like that, the whole team has to come back to try and defend the push. Yeah, and bottom lane isn't really in a threatening, threatening position either. Resolution's actually farming back on their side of the map, so they're not going to be able to drag them away from this top lane just by split pushing. Uh, though maybe the spam is enough between the, the Puck and the Shaman. Fly might have to put himself in harm's way just to hold on to this. Yeah, scary stuff. They have the wards if they need to drop it also, but... Spirit smelling blood, wanting to try and keep the pressure on right here. They're doing a good bit of damage, like you were saying, and this right now, if you're OG, to be so careful about that reality or point you out of position. All right, Serpent Ward's getting dropped down. They do only have 10 seconds to go on the Timbersaw respawn. So it looks like Team Spirit, once again, gonna be denied this, uh, this tier three tower. They really just want that so they can go and take the shrines, probably uh, go and take the tier twos a little bit later on. They might even set their sights on the tier twos instead. Um, and OG completely trapped inside of their base. They're going to try and smoke their way out of this one, though. Oh, and this was what they just did earlier. So going through two smokes very uh, consecutively back to back. They're trying to bait out Mad here in the top lane. DK Phobos is going to move in. Viber is there as well. And, well, the Orchid comes out there. The sign to hit the Spiderlings. Where's the rest of his team? They're going to fully commit for this one now. They managed to drop the drink while Mad trying to turn this. Now the roll in as well. It's pretty decent, but the rest of OG, they're just not tanky enough. They might be able to bring down ILTW. He's going to force that boy trying to TP out. He manages to get away. Oh, it's disaster. Master strikes in the top lane as OG are gonna lose five and not take one kill. They annihilated the Terrorblade in that fight. Just not, resolution not nearly tanky enough to do anything. He even had a 17 charge one and the Sunder, but just got chain stunned from full to nothing. And without that damage coming in, it feels like they're even just ignoring the Timbersaw, right? They, they threw a little bit of damage onto him at the beginning of the fight, but you look at the in the replay here, with the rest of Team Spirit coming in from behind, they land the two-man Gale, and then the entire backline of OG just gets annihilated. Well, yeah. Team Spirit recognizing the moment and striking while the iron is hot. Can they get out of here okay? I think the answer is yes, they're just too freaking tanky right now. OG don't have an answer at all. Their heroes are, are all so strong with like their first item. You know, the, the Venomancer even just picking up like a Force Staff for the Hood, the Armlet on the CK, and the Orchid on the Broodmother. Plus they just had such good lanes. This, this Broodmother pick has been, I think, masterful for Team Spirit. Like, they, they banned out the Brew, they tried to put pressure on DK Phobos, and Team Spirit just found another hero that he can completely take over the game on. Well. Viver now finding Keizu in the woods. There's not really any other heroes from Team Spirit around that can help out with this, so they're going to decide to back out. But yeah, DK Phobos has felt like at times the man of the tournament is Flying poor old dead. Fly is just going to drop. Definitely making his impact felt here as he's going next for another item out on the courier. That's going to be the BKB. They're not messing around. They just want to end this. Yeah, all right, so this is probably the most impactful item that OG were waiting for. The Blink Dagger on the Puck now picked up, but it, it feels like they're still... At this point, they're just so far behind that I don't know if it's really going to matter. Team Spirit is starting to tank up even more. Uh, the CK even picking up a Solar Crest here just so that they can secure the Roshan and look to close out the game. Team Spirit not messing around. They've, they've got revenge against uh, VGJ Thunder in, uh, in their sights. Definitely. And, I mean, you know, you talk about that Blink Dagger on Puck, but what do you do when DK Phobos pops BKB and runs at you? Like, you have to try and kite that hero, but it's just not happening. Bottom lane at the very least, we do see that Resolution is starting to push out this wave and trying to put his team in a position where they can force Team Spirit to back. Yeah, that, I would be shocked if Team Spirit didn't TP anybody back here, but they are just going to send the Witch Doctor. And they pop the Phantasm on the mid lane. All right. Villadin is there, hiding in the trees. Well, with only three heroes here, this could be a little bit scary for Team Spirit if OG are able to recognize that they haven't sent that many heroes back. 
Yeah, the, the chalk room cleaning things up nicely. Resolution has to find a nice spot in the trees to TP out, but Viber's on his tail. Yeah. Might be able to find him. Oh, he just barely gets out of there, and now maybe they can take the fight on OG. They're trying to roll forward and see if they can run into anybody, but the pullback in, a lot of damage. Jerex, four seconds stunned. He's not going to be able to get away from this one. Uh, Resolution wants to take this fight. They want to try and make it happen, but he's just getting ran at by the Broodmother, and they're going to turn their sights now onto Mad, who does manage to jump away. The reality rip pulling him back in. Is this too much to fight, though? That is still a monster, and uh, looking for the chase, he is going to be able to hit there, but now the Gale and now the rest of Team Spirit has shown up, and the uh, captain, he is starting to fall rather rapidly. Jump forward, Kezu trying to turn it. The armor toggles over, comes out from Illidan, and they force out the deny, again trying to run. Team Spirit making it look easy. They are kiting the Timbersaw to no end. Like, it does take pretty much their entire lineup to kill him, but DK Phobos is doing such a good job. He's staying in between the Timber and the rest of his team, preventing anyone else from really coming in to help. Uh, and then Team Spirit are just running circles around Mad, like we saw with the Unla toggles. And they don't even have that many disables. It's just that Timbersaw needs some stuns to set him up, and his stuns can't get into the fight. And looking at any answer right now, it's gonna be a high ground push yet again. Reality Rift, they got him caught. That's a lot of damage. Maledict down as well. The BKB is popped for the Broodmother. Starting to take down Madden is just gonna drop. No buyback at all. Illidan's not even dead. Armatizel. He's fine. Oh, Team Spirit. No. Taking this one. Illidan making a statement here. Well, I made a statement in the, <laughs> in the interview, but... OG gonna lose potentially their second lane of Rax just past the 20 minute mark. They don't have any other pressure elsewhere on the map. The Plague Wards are going to work and they, they don't have any way to clear those whatsoever. Yeah, this, this is probably just two lanes. I mean, they've got a Glyph for a second. There is a Dream Coil off cooldown. But what does that matter? And I mean, Team Spirit may be coming in as an underdog. Not a lot of people are expecting a ton from them, but showing that they came to play and now going to run for it. They find themselves a Timber Saw yet again. Three seconds stun. This one's almost damn near a solo as a mega kill streak comes out for Illidan. The cask is bouncing. This game is looking over. They, they don't have an answer in the world at all. Kezu trying to run away. Another two seconds stun. They do manage to find the silence, but they will eventually find the kill. Triple there for the CK, and they're hitting tier fours. Yeah, it, they, oh man, these, these heroes are so annoying, and Team Spirit play them so well uh, as well. We saw it in the previous game. We've been seeing it all tournament long. They, I think this is just a really bad style matchup almost for OG. They haven't been able to, with this roster, deal with the aggression from Spirit, uh, really exploiting maybe some of the weaknesses in communication on the OG side. And also exploiting Kezu's like, hero pool a little bit as well, I think. Uh, just forcing him onto maybe something that he's not 100% comfortable on. Well, the Bloodthorn yeah. Spider is getting in a position where ready to finish this one off. They can walk forward with the BKB, pull back in mad, looking for that hit. They're going to be able to find it. A good Dream Glow from Kenzu. It's about as good of a fight as you can hope for, but the problem is the fight was always going to be rough. The damage is there. Mad is going to be pushed back out. TW doing a ton to him as well. They did end up burning through the CK, but that was only the Aegis. And finally being able to take down the Witch Doctor, I think that's going to be the last casualty as Team Spirit are going to take down OG and move on against BGJ. Just so well played. So well drafted for Two Spirit. I think, uh, what else can you say? OG, they they scrambled to try and recover the lanes. They picked the Timber Saw at the very end. It went even against the Broodmother initially, and then as the...